Pucks in the micro away from the pros, focusing down stalkers one by one. Hold coming in from every single angle. There's a time warp, but look at this concave, this crescent moon. up ladies and gentlemen hello and welcome back from the lg studios here in new york city my name is axel toss i am joined by axlab and today we are continuing our coverage of the wcs america qualifiers for entry into the premier league where we already have some players we already have some players there but we're trying to find out which eight are going to join them more specifically which four because we already know four from from monday the and past two Tuesday. days Exactly. Of course, if you're following along with us every day this week, well, Monday through Thursday, four days this week, yes. uh, we've been doing the qualifiers every day. Two more people qualify. Indeed. Of course, uh, Monday we found out that Alicia and Revival actually ended up winning on Monday. Tuesday, uh, I believe it was Juan, or no, sorry, excuse me, Apocalypse uh, took it out of those four. Apocalypse, yeah. Yes. And then today, of course, it's going to be Top versus Prank. And then the winner that qualifies, the loser will play the winner of Drunken Boy and Heart. And then the winner of that third match is going to be our it's other qualifier. It's really not as complicated as it sounds. Um, basically, it started with a 512 person bracket, and we're trying to find eight from that 512 person bracket. And we already got four. Again, Alicia, Revival, Bogdan, the SEC. And then we're going to find out four today and tomorrow. Again, these eight players join the existing players that are in the Premier League right now. Of course, there's 24 of them. Who were invited and we're gonna find out in the next two days who they're gonna be so pretty exciting stuff so far it's been the koreans destroying everything yes yes that's been really the tale of it uh, a lot of the koreans from both team axiom and team eg yes. have shown some very strong play of course today we have another uh two koreans from team axiom both crank and heart mm -hmm. uh if, if crank loses and heart wins we could have a potential team kill on our hands it could happen uh they could both qualify too but here's an updated look at the winner's bracket of course, we got Alicia and the STC already qualified, but today we're going to be starting off with the PvP top versus Crank. The winner of that will qualify. And of course, tomorrow, Osiris Live, the winner of that will qualify. So a lot of fun stuff coming your way. Of course, a glance at the loser bracket as well, because the loser of top Crank, they're not out of it by any means. No, no. They still, uh, they're still, and they'll still play the winner of Heart and Drunken Boy. Yes. Uh, for that last qualification spot. Yes. So you know we should start talking about these players. Of course, the first match we're going to see is Top versus Crank. Crank is one of those guys who, um, gosh, his story is just so cool. I I'm trying to figure out a way to to put it into words properly. Uh, Crank was a guy who wasn't that well known, but Total Biscuit decided, you know what, I'm going to send you to an MLG. Yes. That's what happened. And then he was the first member of Team Axiom. Of course, Axiom is a team uh, founded by Mr. Total Biscuit and Mrs. Jenna Bain. And of course, they are. Um, it's really cool what they did with that. You know, they, they, they're they trying to help out the, the scene in Korea. So they recruited a bunch of Korean players. And now that is Axiom Esports. And they're doing a great job in this tournament so far. Of course, Alicia already qualifying. And I'm sure they would love if Crank could qualify. Uh, by beating oh, Top of course. in this match. Uh, I believe he was their original player. Yeah, he was much. the he guy. The one. So, uh, of course, his opponent, Top, is one of the best players from China. Third place in the China WCS tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, a very, very well-known player in that circle. But he hasn't really dipped his toes in a competition outside of China very much yet. So there's not too much we know about him. 
One thing right. we know, though, is he's really torn through this tournament so far. He's beaten a lot of great players. He has. Uh, he has indeed. He took out In Control and Bad Cop leading up to this point. Rossi, just before that, of course, you know, I would consider him to be the underdog in this situation against Crank. Crank, one of those powerhouse Korean players. But, but that's the thing. Like, we don't know how good these Chinese players are necessarily. So it's, it's hard to even say if he is he the favorite the underdog. Who knows? Because right. uh, we know he's one of the top players in China with that WCS result from the WCS of 2012. Mm -hmm. Can he achieve similar success in the WCS of 2013? We'll see. Here, trying to qualify in the uh, North and South American Continental WCS. First match, though, him versus Crank. Why don't we just get right started Let's right to get number Let's one? Let's do it. And again, the loser of this match isn't out of it yet. So do not be sad because they will have a second chance because they are both in the winner's bracket. They've been having a phenomenal tournament so far, neither player has lost yet. First map is going to be Akalon Wastes. We got ourselves a nifty little PvP. In the bottom right-hand location, we have the red Protoss player from Team Axiom. He was their first member, and he is a very skilled Protoss player. He is Crank. His opponent in the top left-hand location. He's the blue Protoss player hailing from China. It makes a little bit of sense of where he is located on the map in the top left because his name is Top. So who do you got here, Nick? I mean, like I said, it's so hard to predict these uh, Chinese guys exactly how good they are. Uh, top, it, he's one of the top Chinese guys, and so far we've seen... <laughs> one of the top uh, Chinese guys. I see what you did there, Nick. Pretty, pretty clever. <laughs> uh, we've seen in this tournament the Chinese guys that have done very well. Uh, and, yeah. and Top especially. I mean, he hasn't he hasn't lost a series yet. If he wins this, he's already qualified, so it'll be, it'll be an undefeated run. Uh, but going up against Crank, like you mentioned, Crank is... is I, I can't bet against Crank if he's playing a, a non-Korean. I just can't because, uh, you know, the, the Koreans have that eSports culture, and, and Crank, of course, is, is one of the most dominant Korean players. Um, it, it's, it's very, 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 very hard to bet against them. Uh, I think, though, if Top... If he can come up with some builds that Crank may not be used to, yeah. that's really going to be his main advantage because Crank's games are everywhere. Everyone knows who Crank is. They know how he plays. There's plenty of, of, of you know games to study of him, uh, even if you don't necessarily. You know, and it's not like Top had you know, a lot of time to prepare for Crank. It's, it's a big tournament. He just you know ran into him in the bracket. Yeah. Um, but um, he's surely heard of Crank. He's surely seen some of his games before. Uh, whereas on the other hand, Crank... Uh, might have never seen Top play before, uh, unless he's really followed the, the Chinese scene, which uh, not as many people follow that scene as the South Korean scene. All right, we'll see what happens. Um, again, I think I think Top would be considered the underdog, but wouldn't it be a story if he could win here today? Um, but you know, we'll have to see what what, what what's going to unfold. Of course, we don't necessarily know the meta game behind the Chinese players. Like, who knows? Um, you know how they practice and all that stuff what kind of builds they're looking to, to utilize so maybe we'll see some some interesting builds here from the chinese player top um you know again he hasn't lost in this tournament yet so it's definitely likely he actually took out machine in the very first round uh of course machine a well-known player from team evil geniuses so one thing we can tell for certain is that so far both their builds are pretty much identical i mean down to almost a second uh, top of the slightly faster third pylon, crank with a slightly faster militia core. Here could be your potential first deviation. Top going straight for that Twilight Council. I really like that choice. There's no reason to hesitate in, in throwing down your tech uh, unless you want to put on a lot of aggression early. Of course, he could tech a little bit faster um, than crank because crank, of course, is, is getting that mothership core, and top is going to delay his until after he starts his tech. These guys are like mimicking each other with everything else besides those yes. those tech structures. I mean, the probes going to the watchtowers, the stalkers going in the same direction, scouting the same places. These guys are high level players, you can definitely tell. But yeah, the, the deviation being, of course, Mother's Core a little bit earlier here from Crank, and we see the Dark Shrine going down from Mr. Top. Oh, and this could be very dangerous for Crank. Of course, Crank going uh, with the Stargate tech and then uh, a third gateway. And in, in Wings of Liberty, of course, Dark Shrine uh, was very strong against Stargate. It's, it wasn't, you know, a free win or anything, but a Stargate player had to scout the Dark Shrine mm -hmm. in time. They didn't have to reactively get a robotics or a forge or some other form of detection uh, very, very quickly. Uh, now, while you still probably at some point want the other form of detection, 
in Heart of the Swarm, the Stargate allows you to build an Oracle, yes. which can use some of its energy to temporarily detect DT. So you can uh, keep them at bay for a little bit longer, and, and you have a little bit more time before you really have to get in your own permanent form of detection. His rally on this Oracle is very close to that pylon. You know, I, I'm almost wondering, if he scouts that pylon this early with the Oracle, does he just turn it around immediately, knowing that, okay, some shenanigans might happen, or maybe send his units over there, and then how do we get a Dark, a dark uh, Templar's Warped if there's no pylons there for top? So we'll have to keep an eye on whether or not Crank can identify these forward pylons from his opponent. We've got a little bit of a skirmish here. Three Stalkers versus three Stalkers. Looks like they're going to be showing some respect to each other for now, but Crank bringing forward a Mothership Core. He's about to apply some uh, oh, decently sized pressure. If he gets a pressure. Time Warp, Top could lose a couple of these Stalkers. Mothership Core can't quite get close enough. A great pullback by Top, getting out of range before they would have been slowed down and then surely taken out by Crank's superior. Oh, Stalker count. Crank sees it. Oh, he does see it. The DTs are coming in. Crank, of course, is building a Phoenix now. Oracle is back on defensive duty. All right, we have the Stalkers and Mothership Core coming forward here from Crank. Mothership Core from top has placed down the Photon Overcharge. That's doing a good amount of damage. Zoo top, or top, excuse me. Meanwhile, coming to the main base, but he sees his opponent has activated Envision. So he doesn't necessarily want to go in there until that's oh, over. But Dark Temple are getting a decent amount of yeah, there's. I mean, yes. Crank conceded Dark Templar, but he only had a single Stalker as damage output. And of course, Stalkers against a lot of units don't do a ton of damage. DT was able to get numerous probe kills. Another one sneaking on the other side of the How base. How much time is left on this thing? Oh, Envision is, is still active. DT's got to be careful. It's going to go for probes. It should probably back away now because it, it could escape, but no. It's going to go straight for the probes and, and only getting a couple of kills before going down. Yeah, let's see how many die. It's eight workers killed yeah. here for top. Wow, that's not bad at all. 20 to 20 in favor of top at this point. He definitely has that economic advantage. I think top's going to be feeling fairly happy uh, on what happened there. He definitely is. He's also going straight to Blink, which is a great tech against the airplay that Crank is showing. Crank now has a robotics. He's building his observer, so DTs won't really be as big of a threat going forward. But uh, I think they've done enough damage that Top can safely expand without uh, really any type of fear. Yeah. He could also potentially try to put on a lot of pressure on his opponent. He has a robotics of his own. So once he has an observer, using that blink tech, he can really uh, get high ground vision and try to get some cost-efficient trades against Crank. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised he hasn't tried to put down his Nexus yet. Of course, he's not sure if his opponent is going to follow it up with like a Void Ray all in of some sorts on one base. So you got to be a little bit careful of that. Meanwhile, we see Crank adding on that Robo so he can get an Observer on the field. So he doesn't have to keep uh, spending in Vision on the Oracle. And he can actually send his Oracle across the map to potentially do some harassment, which is exactly what he's going to do. Sending that guy to the top right hand location of the map. And I'm sure inevitably it's going to go over to the left to the middle line of top. But top could be moving out here with his army. Blink is about to finish. I don't see this doing too much damage, though, because Crank is still on one base, and he's cranking out Immortals. Excuse the pun. <laughs> he's definitely going to get a couple of those Immortals out. Combined with Void Rays, they're going to be very effective at keeping the Stalkers back. Uh, what could really do a lot of damage, Crank has an Oracle. It's heading towards Top's mineral line. Top's ready, though. He's got two oh. Stalkers. One Stalker gets lift. The other Stalker flees in terror, abandoning the probes, now blinking in. Uh, but of course, one Stalker's damage output is not that high. Oracle doing a lot of damage here. Uh, it just won't die. Seven kills, nine kills, ten kills, eight, twelve. Oh, man. The numbers keep going up. Let's look at income. Now it's 24 to 17, 13 to 8 workers killed in favor of Crank. And just like that, Crank is going to be the happy guy now. A really great move by Crank there, pulling that Phoenix because two Stalkers probably could have pushed that Oracle away without too much of a problem, but a single Stalker just couldn't cut it. The lift there was instrumental, and now Crank has a, has oh. a definitive advantage. How pressured is Top here to do damage? Oh, oh. blink uh, it up, take it down the Observer, <gasps> and now the DT is going to have free reign on the ground. Army, nifty play there from Top. What's his form of detection? I don't know. There isn't one. There's not. He's Chrono Boots into Robotics as soon as this next Immortal and pops the Oracle out. Oracle died. Remember yeah, he's, that. He, he's going to build an Observer. Great force field to keep that DT at bay. Oh, and, um, and a Photon Overcharge to keep the other forces at bay, but it's not fooling Top. He's actually just going to charge in there. Okay. So what Top could end up doing here is just looking for the Observers of his opponent and sniping those, um, letting the DTs do whatever they want. A pretty nice strategy. Of course, the Observer is now out here for Craig. That is the VIP. Did he just kill his own probe? I think he might have. You know, sometimes those probes aren't working hard enough. Yep. And you got to kill gotta one as an example. But uh, another engagement going to happen. Your Observer, is it going to get sniped? Oh, no, he's not sniping the Observer, although he could instead going for the straight-up engagement. But Crank has so much. He's up 16 to 37 in supply. Two Immortals here just shredding apart the Stalkers and Top just like that. 
is not going to be a happy camper. Dark Templar trying to go into the main base to make something out of nothing, but Crank, he's at 20 harvesters, sure, but his, his standing army is just so much bigger than him. It really is. You know, Top did have that blink tech available, but unfortunately, Crank had too many immortals and void rates. Damage up was too high. A nice little container by, by Top, actually. If he can keep hitting these force fields just right, uh, he could potentially uh, delay Crank from expanding. And if Crank can't expand, then you can't really take advantage of the fact that he's got the strong oh, army. Oh, no! no he's force not field. force fielding. Oh, it's too late. Crank gets down the ramp, and Top's forces are going to have to retreat. I think this is it. If he retreats, he's going to be so far behind in this game. He doesn't have a probe. Looks like getting ready to put down a Nexus, but I don't know what stops Crank from just surging across the field and counterattack. At this point, there's really not much. Crank's army is so much stronger. The three Immortals really providing the muscle behind that army. Uh, if Top can get a Nexus done and a Mothership Core out with enough energy to use a uh -huh. Photon Overcharge, perhaps that can buy him enough time to get back in the game. But as it is, uh, it's going to be very hard to get both those in time before Crank decides to drop the hammer across the map and, and deny the expansion. You know, he could just, like, make some Stalkers, get an Observer out, and just try to snipe that Observer from his opponent. I mean, that that's... It, we saw him do that a little bit earlier. It's pretty fun, but it's not something you want to have to resort to. But in this situation, when you're down as, as far down as Top is, I mean, what else can you do? Fun, uh, interestingly enough, Crank behind this is going for a Dark Shrine of his own. And that is... Uh, there's a blue product. I mean, there is a Robo here for, for Top, so it's not like he's not going to have Observers. Of course, we are just talking about him potentially trying to snipe the Observers of his opponent. So, interesting decision here from Crank. Might just get that Dark Shrine to be annoying and potentially go for Charge Lots a little bit later. Or might just go straight up Void Ray Archon or something. Like yeah, that. it could be. You know, I really don't mind the decision to get that Dark Shrine. It's, it's not really that much of a gas yeah. cost that, that it used to be. Uh, and if it's only 150, 150, it has the potential to totally straight out win a game. Uh, the one thing I would like to see is, like you mentioned, Crank moving out the nine his opponent's expansion. His hallucination just confirmed the existence of that expansion. There is a slight risk factor uh, that Top, of course, having Blink and Observers could try to go for a base race type play. That's a good point. Um, but he did just notice that Top had a, y y you know, his scouting hallucination noticed the, the Immortals at Top and the Zeld. So uh, he should at this point realize there's not a whole lot of Stalkers out in the field. I mean, and in, in, in not too long ago, he pretty much just destroyed every single Stalker that Top had on the field. Units lost to 65, 75 to 41, 25 in favor of the Red Protoss player, Ooh. Crank. So he has a DT. very good idea of what's going on. DT trying to make it in top space. Top spots it, though. A great force field to keep it at bay. And now, of course, uh, Top is going to get he an observer. No observer. Yeah. OK, yeah, it's on the way. Yeah. A really great force field. It, it, that's something that only the best players notice. Is even if you don't have detection, you can notice the shimmer on the map. And, and a very top player will notice that shimmer and then block the DT with the force field to prevent it from getting in the main base. If it's not in the main base, of course, he oh. has time to get that Observer out. Don't only sentries. We got no. the Observer slowly making his way to the natural expansion, and he's going to die. Go. Now, um, it, it's kind of like spotting Observers, too, of your opponent as yes. Terran and like scanning, just, just having really good eyesight and making sure you're really tuned in to what's going on around you. Of course, we've got a DT swiping away at probes or material materializing into thin air. Disappearing into thin air, I guess, is the term. But Top is going to deal with that. However, that was just the calm before the storm, Mr. Axelab, because we got three Void Rays, plenty of Zelt Stalkers, a Sentry. There's a Hero Probe in here as well, looking to put down some proxy pylons so we can have forward reinforcements. Does Top have a chance against this composition? I really like how safe Crank is playing, getting a Photon Cannon in each base to defend against potential DT run buys. Uh, Photon Overcharge is always very useful to defend. Uh, but with this type of damage output Crank has, I think it's going to be too much. Even Photon Overcharge would not save him here. So many Voiders and Immortals with their anti-armor damage are going to take down a Nexus once Top's army's G out of the picture. G from Top Crank takes game number one in this best of three, and he comes one win away from advancing to the Premier League of WCS America Season 1. And that was a, a fairly interesting game. We saw Crank, you know, go for that Stargate opening, and... He literally spotted, and this might be a little bit unlucky for Top, but Top built his pylons at the, you know, at his opponent's third base, right where the oracles went. And when he warped in that first DT, again, we talked about it, Crank was able to see that shimmer in the ground. And once he saw that, he just pulled the oracle back, and guess what? Since that oracle was on the defensive, the DTs couldn't do as much damage as, as, as possible. You know, they did a decent yeah. amount of damage, honestly. Yeah, I, I, I think that the DT play actually was probably worth it. Yeah. And maybe put 
top slightly ahead. It could have been game ending. Yeah, it, it could have been. Uh, uh, but what really kind of put top really, really far behind was that Oracle move combined with the Phoenix that Crank did. Uh, I mean, the DTs yeah. did some nice damage. The Oracle, though, killed probably about half the probes in top's working line. From there on out, Crank just had too big of an army. And what was really cool there was that he got a Robo and an Observer so that he can actually do that. Because you're not it, when you're facing DTs, you're keeping your Oracle at home so it can detect. So we saw Crank put down the Robo, get the Observer out so he can afford to send that, that Oracle across the map and get that damage done to his opponents in line. So pretty cool PvP play, uh, PvP play that we saw in Game 1. And again, Crank is one win away from advancing to the Premier League of WCS America. Guys, stay tuned. Game 2 between Crank and Top coming up.